Hello everyone, I'm Alicia Malone. This is TCM's Fan Favourites, where we've turned over our programming to our TCM Backlot members. And to introduce our next film, I'm joined by JP Gelotti. Hi, JP. Hey, Alicia, how are you? I'm doing really well. And I was reading about your story and how you fell in love with classic film. And from what I understand, you discovered old movies on television in the 1970s, but then your love for classic film really began when TCM became part of your life. Yeah, that's right. And it happened to coincide um, almost a couple of years, about the time I actually started to do acting um, on stage. And uh, I really started to appreciate the craft of acting and I started to get into classic movies, the ones that I was familiar with, and then the ones that I started to learn more about um, through TCM, through the intros and the outros. And uh, it, it really took off from there. And that was like in the mid to late 90s. Yeah. And Robert Osborne, of course, was so instrumental for many of us in stoking that love for classic films. And from what I understand, also, you have picked up a few tips when it comes to delivering your own intros and outros. Yeah, I mean, he's so gentle and engaging and he's just really interesting. And so um, I picked up on that. And when they'll indulge me, family members, uh, you know, that come over for, you know, movie night, I'll try to put a couple of things together prior to a film and uh, do a little bit of like trivia before. And then afterwards, you know, give them a little bit more trivia and like what some of the connections are and stuff. And uh, I'm just I amuse myself like that. And luckily, my family uh, indulges me. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, I love that. I'm so glad we have you here on TCM to help us introduce our next film, the movie that you picked. So tell us, what is your choice this afternoon? Uh, it's the Kane Mutiny, 1954, and starring an ensemble of, of great actors led by Humphrey Bogart. I imagine you as an actor, you appreciate the caliber of actors that we have in this cast. Oh, absolutely. Um, and one of the things that's interesting is that we've got superstars in here. You've got Jose Ferrer, Fred McMurray, Van Johnson, of course, Bogey leading the parade. And they are all superstars. They're, they're, um, they're stars, right? And they have that thing that makes them a star. But what they also have is the the craft, the technical aspects of acting that is really on um, on display here in this movie. Also in this film, we have a young actor who knew a thing or two about Navy ships. Are you referring to Lee Marvin by any chance? That's right, yes. <laughs> yes, he was actually a Marine and he had a lot of combat experience. He actually, I think, was injured in Saipan and was discharged. But I guess because he was on boats and he was on, um, on low level, uh, excursion boats that departed for the beach. He understood uh, how that whole operation went, and I understand that he was used as a technical advisor on the film. Yeah, it's great to see him in just a few little parts of the movie playing Meatball. Now, this is all based on a Pulitzer Prize winning book by Herman Woke, and you actually read this book after you saw the film. So how does it compare? Oh, it really fleshes out the characters. Um, it actually changes uh, the perception of the movie because you realize what they had to do to make it a sellable movie, make it a 120 minute film uh, that was gonna be palatable to audiences. It was a 550 plus page novel. And it was actually focused on how um, uh, talented the writers are, the screenwriters were, to be able to get, condense that into a movie and touch on some of the points in the book without having to go into too much detail. They did a wonderful job doing that. It really made me appreciate how you adapt um, books into films because it's obviously not an easy task. I read The Godfather once as well. Same thing, like there's just a lot of stuff you just can't put in a movie. But they did a wonderful job in uh, in the K-Mutiny, absolutely. Exactly, and they had a lot to deal with at the same time. So Herman Woke did one adaptation of the screenplay, but it was way too long. And Harry Cohn from Columbia Pictures was determined that this film should only be about two hours in length. He also definitely wanted that romantic subplot in there. Yep. And they had to also deal with the Navy, and the Navy itself didn't really like the idea of having mutiny in the title. Yeah, that's right. The mutiny in the title, it's interesting because in the in the in the book, the he wasn't actually charged with a mutiny. He was charged with uh, I actually had to write it down because it's hard to remember. Uh conduct to the <laughs> prejudice of good order and discipline. So obviously that doesn't flow very well as a title and it doesn't it kind of lowers the stakes a little bit. Well, here it is, directed by Edward Dimitrick and produced by Stanley Kramer, The Kane Mutiny.